If you're in the FCT, you would acknowledge that it's quite a wet and rainy morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time for us to have our next guest on the show who would look at the current administration's drive to stimulating the economy. The FG has outlined a trillion naira economic stimulus. Uh, we're also hearing about some drop grants that would be affording Nigerians an opportunity for a better life. Yes, and with us in the studio this morning to join in this conversation is no other person than Mr. Agaba Wilson Agaba, who is a business consultant. Good morning to you. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Let us start by having your own opinion as to this uh, output from the federal government. Um, you know, I've never been a, a fan of doling out money in the name of grants. We have seen what happened um, in most recent time, the Buhari administration, the trader money, the, um, all those grants that were given. Now, what did we get? We flooded our economy with so much cash, with little productivity. And that was the genesis of the level of inflation that we are having today. So we have so much money in a system in the hands of people who are willing to buy and are capable of paying, but we have less productivity. It drove import because, of course, there cannot be vacuum in the economy. Where there is demand, supply must happen one way or the other, either from within or from outside the country. And so we saw that happen, and then he started putting pressure on the Naira because we were converting that money to dollar and all of that. And I also think that when you dole out money, most times it's just like buying a handkerchief to clean your face when your, your roof is leaking. You know, you are just going to buy a lot of handkerchief and you're going to fill your room with dirty handkerchief and then the roof is going to keep leaking. I think it's better to take it by the plunge and fix your roof. What am I saying here? The federal government should look more towards stimulating productivity in the economy. As a business consultant, I know the challenges that my clients are facing currently. People who want to start a new business. It's difficult to do financial projection for an organization because at what rate am I going to peg the USD if the business have foreign exchange component? You know, how am I going to peg the price of their supplies? Supplies here includes both the tangible item that they will get and the services that they will get in order to deliver the product they sell to the market. Prices are unstable. And then any other item that has to do with anything agriculture, there's a problem. Because people are not going to farm, there's insecurity and all of those things. So you can't even rely on anything that has to do with the raw material that comes from agriculture. Let's also talk about the road. You have a lot of issues with transportation of goods from one place to the other in this country. Let's not talk about the bad road. Let's not talk about the kidnapping and banditry that happened on the road. Let's not also talk about the uh, government agencies from agencies in quote from different tiers of the government that put logs of wood on the road you know to extort people carrying goods across the country and all of these things so you see that the climate the business climate is very hostile and it's killing business so i think we should focus our resources more on making the climate better we should have a more strategic fight against uh, insecurity. We should think more of stimulating productivity within the economy. Um, if you look at America, for instance, today, you will see up to 200 multinational corporations originating from the U.S. that have net worth up to 200 billion and thereabout. They are multi-billion dollar corporations originating from the U.S. So imagine if they are paying 1% of their profit as tax. Mm -hmm. As tax. Imagine what the economy, the, the government will benefit in terms of revenue. So if you really want to grow the economy, you need to stimulate productivity. Luckily enough for us, the universe has blessed us with both human and other natural resources that we can tap into. 
We just need to sit down and stop taking the easy way out. When I listen to government policies about stimulating the economy, stimulating the economy, I ask myself, is it that these people are afraid of taking the plunge or they just want to play to the gallery? I was listening to a radio program yesterday and somebody called in and said, tell the government we don't need them to dash us money. Let them fix electricity. Let them fix road. Let them provide public transport system. Let them provide the gas, uh, CNG, uh, gas conversion and whatever they are thinking about. Let them provide security. I will make the money myself. Now, now, some issues that have bordered on improved infrastructure, many would point to the FCT as one place where the road infrastructure is quite commendable. Mm -hmm. And whilst the government is taking other initiatives, I recently also saw a comment coming in from the CPPE, mm -hmm. where they applauded the government on removing the VAT on pharmaceutical care. Now, yeah. let, let, because you mentioned tax as well. Yeah, yeah, now, exactly. with these challenges in the pharmaceutical industry, especially with the exit of GSK mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. this have been some pertinent issues concerning our healthcare because people talk about only being able to do business when you have good health and your body is in the right mm -hmm. frame and mind mm -hmm. for it. Well, I was having this conversation with a friend yesterday uh, at the office and we said that I for one think that this particular administration takes certain very important and critical decisions hastily. Number one, Removal of fair subsidy even before you sat down to understand how the system was working. Number two, floating the Naira when you have not achieved optimum productivity within your country. You will think you are saving money, but the spiral effect brought us where we are today. I learned that the government is still paying subsidy for fuel now. They have returned to paying fair subsidy while we are buying at 780. And the mathematics is simple. If the dollar was at four sixty and fuel was coming in for one dollar per liter, it will be selling at four sixty per liter. So government might be paying maybe two eighty per liter to subsidize for us to buy at maybe one eighty. Now by the time you float the naira and the naira jumps to one thousand five hundred per dollar, then the liter of fuel that comes in at one dollar now becomes 1,500 per liter. So if you want to subsidize for us to buy at 700, then you are doing 800 Naira subsidy. So you see the simple arithmetic. So if you understood the workings of these two policies, you wouldn't have done that. And these two policies is at the very basement. The, the, it, is the, it is the foundation upon which every other economic rules were built. Every of this inflation you are seeing was built on these two policies. And now these policies made the environment too unstable and hostile for people to do businesses. And these pharmaceutical companies left. Now you offer free tariff for importation of pharmaceutical product. When this company left, they left with job. They left with uh, tax, various type of tax that you can collect. Now you give incentive to import. What you are going to do is that other companies who are still operating here will live here to a monsoon climate and then start importing to start exporting to us. So you are going to kill more jobs. You are going to lose more revenue. So I didn't think that we should be talking about tariff. We should be talking about bringing this company back. What can we do to make sure that you will see this your decision? Some of them still have their facilities here. Look, what is the biggest problem you have? What can we do so that you stay? On that, as we wrap up, because time is afraid, uh, I'm afraid it's not our friend this morning. Mm -hmm. What we can do to turn the situation around whilst the federal government is looking to stimulate the economy? Let's get your comments in a minute or two as we wrap it, up. By we, who do you mean? So that I would know. Nation how to... Nigeria, in, in nation building. <laughs> We're also part of it. Everyone yeah, no, and because, as a business consultants. <laughs> because all, all of us, we have our roles to play. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the moment, the hands of Nigerians as citizens are tied. Right. We need those in leadership to lead so we can follow. So we should be intentional. And we should be selfless. We can't have our senators and our house of rep members our governors our house of assembly the presidency and the minister 
you know, I will use this word languishing in opulence unnecessarily and start telling the citizens who can barely survive to tighten their belts. That will not work. We need the leaders to start leading by example, and we, the citizens, will naturally start following them. I urge all of us to come to this table, put all our hands on the deck, and work together to grow our nation. But we have people who are in leadership who should take the lead. Well, I must thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Uh, time is never our friend when we have this conversation, but it's on a promise that this is just the first part of a two-part discussion. Hmm. Usually on Tuesdays, right here on ADBN Television, our core focus at 9 a.m. is issues of the economy. And now Mr. Wilson will also be joined next week, Tuesday, hopefully by other economic experts as we continue to review the federal government's package in terms of what it calls a one trillion naira stimulus to the economy. We'll be back with more on the show this morning. Please stay with us.